Okay, so I already posted a video once showing you that the 3A touch switch does in fact work. Uh, I explained that I had to figure out the wiring myself and I know this is like the most annoying thing right now for a lot of people and I'm the only person that posted a video explaining mildly how it worked. The problem was is that I'm getting message after message after message asking me to explain it and I never explained it and I'm sorry. So this is finally me explaining how to wire the 3A touch switch. So let's get started real quick and I will, I will show you. So first of all, I took, let's grab the camera, I took the 3A touch switch to install green LEDs in my car. You can see it right down here. Uh, just a strip of LEDs and there's probably about 50 bucks total for this entire setup here. But the one thing that everybody knows and is most annoying, or not everybody, but the people that are contacting me know, is they are, let me turn this up a little, the other way. Well, that's the best I'm going to get. Sorry, it's kind of dark. Uh, but you have this switch over here that's a touchpad, and what you do is you just simply touch it, and it turns off, touch it again, and it turns on. Now, I have this thing wired right now to my radio, and by being wired to my radio, it sh when I turn the car off, it shuts off. It also shuts the lights off and everything else, so that way I'm not killing my battery. Uh, but again, when I turn the car back on, it'll come back on. Now, the downside is it always comes on. It's not like if I turn it off and then I turn the car off, when I turn the car back on, it'll be on again, and that's kind of annoying. But otherwise, it at least doesn't drain the battery, and it works. So every time you turn your car on, you get the cool LEDs under your floorboards. There's my nasty foot for all you foot fetishes out there. Anyways, so, uh, but that's that's how that works. So what we're gonna get into, I gotta turn the car off to wire it, and I gotta open the door, and hopefully none of my neighbors see me, because it's gonna be fun. But uh, this is the problem everyone has. And let's open the door up so we can see it. And let me try to zoom out a little bit. There you go. Um, when you have this switch, shut up, car. It comes with a diagram that is absolutely useless on the back. So I'm gonna carefully pull this out so I don't pull the wiring out with it. But um, you get these three points. And everybody always asks, what are the three points? Because they actually do not tell you in the item. I gotta pull this back. Ooh, that's hot still. <laughs> um, but that's, that's the problem everybody has. So the issue that you have is what people don't realize is that this actually needs two grounds. You need a ground running from the strip of lights, which I have right there, this little wire running to that little screw. And then you need a second ground right here that I have, and you can put it anywhere in the car where, you, where it's grounded, but that's where I have it. It actually runs away from this. That means that you're gonna have power going in, it's gonna go out one way when it's on to light the lights, it's gonna go through all the lights and then it's gonna come out and come out right there instead of coming back through this. The next one is the ground for when it's off because when the thing's off, you still need power to run that little red light and for the circuitry to read. So whatever happens is you're gonna, have to run, sorry, one of my neighbors is screaming at somebody, but you're gonna have to ru still run power through it and it needs to go somewhere, so that power goes out right there. And now the big question is, which one is which? Well, that's a great question. So let's take a look at my fuse box, which you can barely see. I don't have a flashlight, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can crank. Uh, there you go, there, that's better. Right there you can see I have a a fuse splitter running out of my radio fuse. That gives me two extra fuses and it splits the power, one going back through to the radio and another one running red up here into this wire and let's see, so it's a little black wire so that means that right here the black wire is this one. So that's power going in right there is the top one that sits by itself. Okay, right, right there is power in. So then you have two more options, and sadly both of these are white. One of these is gonna be a ground, and one of these is gonna to run to the lights. So now that you have power in, and now that this is sort of, let's fix this wire so I don't pull it out and have to do all this again. Um, oop, there we go. 
let's figure out real quick this one right here this guy right let's see you can see it that guy right there is running that's your ground right there so there you go there's power in and this one is a separate ground for the unit and that leaves only one left this one right here is your power to whatever it is you're trying to power now I got LEDs but no matter what you're trying to power it's going to need its own individual ground running out of it and into your car somewhere it does not run back into this device at all it stay it goes out it goes around your car wherever and then it comes back out and it goes somewhere completely not connected to this device something like well that's for the device but there's your little you can see it right there is a little wire running to that screw and that's enough that's how it works. There's your wiring right there. Power in, let me get that away. Power in, ground, and power out. And no, none of that actually makes any sense. In theory, this should be, uh, well, I guess it still does kind of make sense because the separate one is the power in, but it, it doesn't matter because the way they're laid out, they're all, each one is, this is the only one that's not technically separate. Technically that one's separate from those two, this one's technically separate. It's so stupid and annoying, and I don't know why their diagram is so poor, and I've had people call, or not call me, but message me saying that they have actually called the company, and the company doesn't even know how to wire this thing. So, there you have it. Black wire is uh, right here. Let's pull that right there, you can see it. Just so you know, there's, there's my power coming out of the device. Sorry, I keep having to rack focus there. There's your power going in the device. When I tug on that, you get, you can see right there, that's the little black wire. So I'm gonna tug on it again real quick. There, see, it's that little, little black wire with the white stripe. And then I run a ground to somewhere, and it turns into the black wire inside my car there. But it's just because I, I don't know, I didn't have a lot of wiring at the time when I did this. Uh, and then this guy right here, which is, uh, let's just check. Let me double check myself. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's don't listen to me. I'm, the reason it's black is because that's coming out of the lights, not out of this device. So sorry about that. Anyway, so yeah, but you get it. Just just listen to me on this. Okay, so we got power power in. This one is the off ground, and this one is the on. Uh, power route to the lights or the unit. So, all right. So, hopefully, and I'm gonna get the zoom and focus. Oh Jesus, it's so hard to do this and work at the same time. But, um, yeah, there you have it. So that's how you do it. That's how you um, wire it up. Hopefully, that helps all of you and answers all your questions. I don't think I could make it any any clearer, really. Um, I know I'll still get a bunch of questions, but you know, it's worth it and uh, You know the device does work. It's just that what most people don't realize is that you have to have two grounds You have to have a separate ground for the lights or whatever you're wiring it up to and the device itself because when you have a circuit with a switch the switch when it's off cuts the power. That means power is not running through it. But this device has to have power running through it all the time, even when it's off, because it's not a, it's, it's a circuit. It's a circuit board. It's detecting, even when it's off, whether you touched it or not. So that's why you have to, you know, keep power going through it at all times. So that's the, where most people go wrong and what they definitely don't explain on the box and they don't show you any of the power. It's so stupid and I'm sorry, but hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that explains everything. And uh, cause I'm, it's, I'm melting in my car right now and this is why I didn't do it in the first place. So please, hopefully that does it. And uh, if you have any other questions, yes, you can message me, but uh, yeah, really, if you ask me how to wire it again, I'm just gonna hit, tell you to hit replay. So, <laughs> so anyways, if you wanna know about like the circuit splitters and stuff like that too, just go to your neighborhood AutoZone. They know about that stuff. I know AutoZone or something does not know about uh, the, the, how to use the switch itself but they'll at least know how to wire it uh well no they won't know how to wire it but they'll know how to wire everything else you need so uh thank you for watching i again i hope i helped and uh you know message or comment and please keep watching and i'll see you next time thanks
pretty. <laughs> and let's turn those off because they're kind of annoying. There you go. Thank you. Bye.